Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Chevy Colorado, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms. But before we do that, let me check this out and make sure that it's gonna work for you. So before we jump right in and kind of start talking about the base plate, uh, I figured it'd be useful just to kind of refresh ourselves and touch base on the main components that we're gonna to need to flat tow our truck down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five main parts that you're gonna need. Uh, the first one is going to be the base plate, and that's gonna provide us with a uh, solid and reliable attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. And the tow bar is gonna be the second component. That's gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your vehicle to the back of your motorhome. The third main component is going to be safety cables. And these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring. And what this is gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Chevy, uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main part will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Colorado whenever you hit the brakes in your RV, helping to bring you to a more uh, predictable and complete stop. There are a couple more parts that aren't absolutely necessary, but I definitely like to recommend just to give you a good experience overall. And one of them is what's called the battery charge line. And what that's gonna do is essentially maintain or trickle charge your truck's battery whenever you're flat towing it behind your motorhome. That way, um, you know, it won't be drained from the braking system. A lot of times the supplemental braking systems are gonna use your truck's battery power. So what happens over time, you know, they keep using power and power and power and you just run out of juice. And so that's where that charge line uh, is gonna come into play. It's gonna keep your battery full. That way when you get to where you're going, you'll hit the key and everything will start up. And the other thing that I suggest for the Colorado is what's called the automatic battery disconnect. And I, I always recommend this for these trucks because with these, whenever you flat tow them, you have to disconnect the battery. And so that really leaves you a couple of choices. One of them being to pop the hood, undo the battery whenever you're flat towing it, hook it back up whenever you're ready to start your truck. And I mean, is it doable? Sure, it'd probably get annoying over time. Um, and that's where something like this would come into play. All right, so instead of having to deal with all that, you simply just push the button, it disconnects the battery. Whenever you're ready to start the truck, push it again, power comes on and you're ready to roll. So this is what the front of your Colorado is going to look like whenever you're not hooked up to your motorhome and, and uh, flat towing it around. And uh, I feel like this is pretty important, you know, because primarily it's probably how you're gonna be using the truck. And in terms of appearance, you know, I don't think it looks too bad. The base plate, uh, uh, the base plate's gonna come through the openings that your tow hooks were originally in, so nothing really too crazy there. I do kind of wish there was a better way to mount up your other components. You know, not really a huge deal. I'm sure if you spent a lot of time and made stuff, you could probably have them blend in a little bit better, but they give you a bracket, so it definitely helps speed things up. And at least they're out in the open where you can get to them easily. Um, so that's a bonus there, but you know, I really can't find any or too many drawbacks uh, on it in terms of the appearance goes. Uh, I do like the fact that this is going to be really easy to use and I feel like that almost outweighs um, uh, the appearance sometimes because whenever you're ready to hook up to your motorhome, you know, you don't want something that's a big pain, right? You want to get the show on the road, hooked up, know you're safe and uh, you'll be good to go. Whenever you are ready to hook up, you're gonna have these removable arms. And the way these are gonna work, they slide in, then you rotate it about a quarter turn, and they'll lock into place. Same deal with the one on the other side. And once these are in, these are gonna give you that attachment point, that way you can hook your tow bar up to it. So once you have those arms in, you can pull up to the motorhome and start to get hooked up. So you get all your components on, but the way the Tow bar interacts with the base plate. It's a direct connect type, so this folder is just gonna line up. Take the pin, put that through, and your clip. Safety chain opening is easy to get to there, so clip that in. 
And like I said, once you have all that other stuff hooked up, you should be good to go. Uh, this base plate is going to work with the Roadmaster tow bars, like the one we have here today. We have the Nighthawk. This is a really nice unit. Um, if you're looking for one, there's plenty of others as well. But uh, with that in mind, the base plate does have the potential to work with other brand tow bars as well. So let's say, for example, if uh, you have a Blue Ox tow bar already and you really like it, you don't want to switch it up and save, save a few bucks, you can change it pretty good. You're going to be able to keep that tow bar and just change out the ends. There's some adapter pieces that you can change out and allow the two to pair up together. So if that's your case, that's always uh, an option for you. This is what your setup could look like once you have everything hooked up and you're ready to flat tow behind your motorhome. And I think it looks nice, uh, pretty organized for the most part. You kind of take a glance back here, see everything, uh, know what's going on. Uh, once everything's hooked up, actually, I, I kind of am beginning to like uh, this guy here where we have all of our uh, other things, our wiring and our braking system as one whole deal kind of. I'm kind of a fan of it. It just kind of brings everything together and runs it into one whole uh, deal, if that makes sense. Well, that's just my opinion. But overall, um, I mean, don't get much more simple. Like I said, it's easy to look back here and figure out what's going on. Other than that, though, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's a nice setup. I really like it, actually. Uh, with the base plate, the attachment points being so wide, I feel like that ought to really help your truck track behind the motorhome and stay true to it. And especially with the setup like this one here, they got the Nighthawk tow bar. Uh, this thing is definitely proven and tried and true. So a combination like this uh, should definitely get the job done and it's something you really can't go wrong with. As far as getting the base plate installed, uh, really wasn't too bad. You do have to remove the front fascia, but everything's pretty easy to get to. Once that's out of the way though, I mean, essentially the base plate kind of just bolts on, replaces the tow hooks. There's really not much to it there. So really shouldn't run into too many issues or take up a whole lot of your time. But speaking of that, uh, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Colorado. And we're gonna have to remove uh, some of the components here on the front end to get our base plate on. So we're gonna start with three fasteners on each side of our radiator cover uh, that we're gonna need to remove. Here's those fasteners. We're going to pull them out with a T15 Torx bit. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Now what we need to do, if you look in the smaller grill uh, opening section here, on each side there's going to be a cutout. All right, and inside of this cutout there's going to be a 10 millimeter head bolt. And so I'm gonna take a socket and an extension, get in there, and carefully remove the bolt, just like that. Now we can move to our wheel wells and along the bottom edge, as well as the side, we're gonna have a total of, looks like six fasteners, and so, I'm going to get them out using a T15 Torx bit. And it does help uh, sometimes if you turn your tires in one way or the other, just to give you a little bit more room to work. And just work our way along here and get them all out. Once you have those Torx bit screws out, you can take your felt wheel well liner and kind of push that in, tuck it in. And if you look along this edge here, where the uh, front bumper meets our quarter panel, we're gonna have three seven millimeter head screws. We'll get in there and get all of them removed. Underneath the car, we're gonna have a couple of fasteners, a seven millimeter head screw right here. Get that one out. And if we work our way towards the front a little bit, 
there's a 15 millimeter head bolt right there. Now at the next set of hands, you can get our fascia off. I did put some painters tape along the seams here just to help you know, prevent any scratching or anything there since we're working in that area. What you're gonna do is pull down to release these alignment pins. And then we can just kind of work our way around. Get our fascia released and then we might have to disconnect some uh, cables here. In our case, we got these fog lights. So we'll just simply just push down on the center of the clip to release them. And then looks like that's it. So we'll set this off to the side out of the way. With the fascia out of the way, if you look at your tow hooks, you'll have a piece of foam on them. We'll just pop that off and get out of the way. And then if you look on our bumper beam inside there, we're gonna have two 15 millimeter head bolts. Go ahead and get these removed. I already got the other ones out from the other side. Once them are off though, you should be able to grab our beam here and set it off to the side. Now we can remove this plastic air dam piece here. So there's gonna be three push pin type fasteners like this, and with these, you can take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry underneath the head of it. And then we should be able to get behind the base and pull it out. The same thing. Essentially, there's just one on each side and then one there in the middle. And once this last one is removed, should be able to take this air dam piece off and this is still snapped in but you should be able to essentially just apply some pressure to it and get it off here that's on there pretty tight so you're gonna have to use a little bit of force there Once we have it off though, we can set it to the side. At this point we can get these tow hooks removed. So with an 18 millimeter wrench and socket, we can get these two bolts out. And get them out of the way. Now we can grab our side specific uh, base plate and check your instructions, make sure you have the right one, but this is gonna line up here. And what I'm gonna do, one of these bolts that was uh, holding on the bumper beam, I'm just gonna put that in to keep this somewhat secure for now. And then you can take the bolts here that were originally holding on the tow hooks, and you wanna take some red Loctite and put that on the threads. And if you don't have any red Loctite, you can always get some here at E-Trailer. And all the hardware that we're gonna use to secure the base plate is gonna receive some of this. But we'll take these, push them through. And then on the other side where they come out, we can get the nuts started. I'll take the factory nuts and I'm gonna get these started on there and tight. And then what I'm gonna do this bolt here, I'm going to line this up and keep it in position where I want it. I'm going to snug this bolt down. And then I'm going to come back and tighten these up. With those tight, I'll come back up here and pull this bolt out. At this point, you want to torque down these bolts to the manufacturer's specifications. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can get one here at E-Trailer, or a lot of times if you go to your local auto parts store, uh, they'll have one there available that you can rent, and it's usually for free too. 
With those bolts torqued, now we can grab our bumper beam. This is gonna kind of roll back over on top of it. Now we can take our factory hardware and get all of them started. With those bolts started, now we can come back and tighten and torque them. So what I went ahead and did was took our air dam, pop that back into place, put the push pin fasteners back in it, and so essentially this just reinstalls the opposite way that you removed it. Now if you look at the back side of our bumper, we're gonna have this foam piece in here and this needs to get removed. So there will be a clip like this, and these can be kind of a pain sometimes to take off, but usually if you grab some needle nose, ni needle nose pliers, you can uh, pop that off. And there will be a tab here. You can just push back on that. Now obviously you get the other side off, this foam piece should come right out of place. At this point, it would be a great time to install some of your other flat toe components like your wiring, braking system, and so on. That's just because we have all this extra space up here to work. Uh, it usually makes it easier and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And once I have them on, we can come back, trim out our fascia openings a little bit, and get everything uh, reinstalled the opposite way that we removed it. So uh, that's what I recommend doing. If you already have them components on or not going to be installing them, refer to the instructions on how to trim the fascia and get it all back together. Now that we have all the components installed, we can get our front fascia on. Uh, so there's a diagram and your instructions tells you where to trim. It's a little difficult to understand, at least in my opinion. So what I did was just held this up in place on the front of our car, saw where it was hitting, and it's really close. So. I think I'm just going to take out this portion here and we should be in pretty good shape. If not, if you always have to pull it back off and trim out a little more, not a huge deal, right? So uh, with this being plastic, I'm going to use an air cutter like this, probably use a Dremel tool, a pair of snips, whatever you got to, uh, to create this opening here. If you want, you can always come back with a file or something like that and kind of smooth out these edges. So I got our fascia on the opposite way that we removed it. Here's how it turned out. I do want to mention, I did have to trim out just a little bit more uh, around essentially the whole opening to get the fascia to fit. But once I did that, everything kind of slid into place and, and uh, bolted right up. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms on our 2022 Chevrolet Colorado.